this seminar. Um, the um, issue that today I'm going to discuss is about Mayat Mosque of Damascus, the intersection of uh, civilization. And um, actually, um, as you see, uh, the Damascus Mosque or the Umayyad Mosque of Damascus is located in the ancient Damascus. Um, and um, as it's very overtly visible, it's um, inside the ancient city and it's a very bold structure. And um, the important and the significant part of this mosque is that it has witnessed different civilization throughout the history. And um, in fact, little by little, this mosque was formed and became the masterpiece in the Islamic era. So this subject emphasizes on the role of the intersection of uh, cultures in the development of Umayyad Mosque as one of the ancient Islamic monuments as a result of the influence of cultures on each other, um, uh, which results from factors such as country expansions, rebellions, and political interactions. Uh, so new cultural texts have been created in the form of uh, monuments and artworks. So uh, this area witnessed uh, the rise and fall of um, several civilization, cultures, and religions, one after the other. And finally, in the contemporary period, um, and in Damascus today, the structure of the ancient mosque has remained, which is a still a place of commuting and worshiping for Muslims. And on the other hand, this place is also very sacred for the Christians because it is believed that the head of John the Baptist, uh, the Baptist is uh, buried in this cathedral, which is now actually ch changed to a, a mosque. So here uh, we are proceeding to consider uh, different parts and different history and layers of this mosque one by one. So this place has been used as a house of worship uh, since Iron Age when uh, our Arameans built a temple dedicated uh, to their god of uh, rain called Haddad. So uh, this is the symbol of Haddad, uh, which is the storm and rain god in Canaanite and ancient Mesopotamian religion. And this is the symbol of Haddad. Uh, which has a bull-like uh, head, and you see the horns, and he holds a, a club and the thunderbolt. And um, he was actually uh, equated with the Greek god of Zeus and also the Roman god of Jupiter. And he was symbolized as uh, this uh, picture uh, as the god of rain and thunder. And um, actually, in uh, Damascus, uh, which those time, it was the capital of Aramean state, uh, only one stone has been preserved and remained, uh, which was dated back to the rule of uh, King Hazel, this picture. And uh, that stone is now preserved in the um, uh, Museum of uh, Damascus. So this is the second structure of the mosque. Um, actually, you can see these pillars, which is belonging to that temple. But in 1664 uh, uh, BCE, uh, before the Christianity, uh, Roman Empire conquered Damascus and assimilated Haddads with their god of thunder, which is Jupiter, uh, the god of Roman. Uh, and uh, so they engaged to reconfigure and expand the temple. And this temple was uh, the largest temple in Syria and uh, started in time of Augustus and uh, continued to complete uh, under the rule of Constantinus. The second, so they assimilated the their temple uh, to their own god of thunder. So they tried to preserve the structure of the previous temple of Haddad. So it means that they uh, tried to keep the culture um, and the architecture of that time. So uh, it is not known how the temple exactly looked like, but it is believed uh, to have the Semitic Canaanite architecture. Uh, from resembling the temple of uh, Jerusalem. These are the remains of the temple. And uh, the site, uh, site largely consisted of the walled courtyard and a small chamber of worship and tower-like um, structure symbolizing high place of God, of storm. So 
most of the Semitic design of the temple of Haddad was preserved in the Roman Empire. And uh, the towers were used for rituals with um, ancient Semitic uh, religious tradition, which were sacrifices were made on high places. This is um, actually one uh, picture which shows the Damascus today. Uh, you can see these um, arcades and uh, also the pillars um, of the temple. Here is the old bazaar in, in, in Damascus. So uh, this is uh, just beside the mosque and the people are actually uh, commuting in this place. So the place is not deserted. It's interestingly within the life of people and you see how actually poorly preserved because they also installed things on those pillars. So um, in fact, uh, all of these are still preserved and remain in this area still. This is the next structure which was added to that temple. And this uh, middle part is the cathedral and this is devoted to John the Baptist. So in um, 16, uh, 634, um, uh, actually, um, six, sorry, in 391, the temple converted to the cathedral by uh, Theodosius uh, I during uh, the persecution of late, late Roman Empire. So they changed their religion and they become Christians and they built this uh, cathedral in that time. And as you see, this is the, another dimension uh, of the cathedral here. And these wooden wooden doors are the ancient belongs to the ancient time, and these mosaic forms are the uh, imitation of the Byzantine um, uh, text text and tile structure. So um, this is added actually. This is preserved, and um, different parts and structure are added to the mosque. Um, here uh, is the next part and the next step, which is the Umayyad Mosque of Damascus, uh, which in uh, 634, Khaled ibn Walid conquered Damascus. And he was the Khalif of Umayyad dynasty, which chose Damascus as uh, the administrative capital by leaving Mecca and Medina, because Damascus had more strategic position and was near the uh, Silk Road. And by that time, the Byzantine cathedral remained in use by the local Christians. And the prayer room was constructed, the one prayer room was constructed for the Muslims in the Eastern part and the Western part was remained for the Christians. So here, the prayer room, um, um, which um, was called the Musalla, it wasn't sufficient. It had uh, the capacity to house the growing number of Muslim worshippers. Therefore, the sixth Khalif, which was Al-Walid, uh, he constructed the mosque on the site of the cathedral in 706. So uh, the construction of the mosque altered the layout uh, of the building, uh, though it preserved the outer walls of the Roman era temple. While the church had the main building located at the center of the rectangular enclosure, uh, but in response to the Christians' protest, because they were sad uh, for uh, losing their cathedral or the church, so Al-Walid ordered all the other confiscated churches in the city to be returned to the Christians as a compensation. So um, the first uh, construction of the mosque was completed in 715 after the death of Al-Walid. This is the plan and the map of the early mosque. And the plan of the new mosque was highly um, in innovative and influential in early Islamic architecture. So the new uh, mosque in Damascus introduced a more basilical plan with three parallel uh, aisles, as you see here, there are three parallel aisles added to the building and a perpendicular central um, nave. This is the church or the cathedral which remain and these aisles were added to the structure. And it, this leads uh, to um, actually from the main entrance, which is here, from the main entrance to the mihrab and designed to emphasize the area originally reserved for the caliph. 
during prayers near the mihrab. So the caliph or the imam was entering from this entrance and directly coming to the uh, nave and then coming directly to the mihrab. Here is mihrab and mihrab is the place which uh, the imam is trying to lead the prayers toward the direction of Mecca. So uh, the Umayyad moved the capital, or, uh, capital to Damascus because um, it was on the Silk Road and the trade road. So they built a new mosque out of the Byzantine church that they purchased. So this mosque was actually, this church was first purchased. And the structure over the middle um, is the old, uh, as I told you, old Byzantine uh, church. And the construction of the mosque were built around it, as you see all the walls and the, uh, the ales here, as you see. So um, this is happening for the first time that the Muslim purchasing Christian property and turning it to a mosque. And so this is done uh, as a symbol. So they built the mosque around the church to show the power of Islam in the area. So Islam, they wanted to show that now Islam is the dominant faith. So here is the courtyard. This is based on uh, Roman Byzantine architecture. And the courtyard is uh, framed uh, by arcade in the form of um, Roman um, uh, uh, Roman uh, structure and architecture. If you look at the, it closely, we see that we have this form of arcade and uh, uh, covered walkways. These are the walkways and uh, around the edge. And that um, covered walkways has two um, uh, arc levels here, very similar to what we see in the Roman acrodot. So the facade faces into the courtyard has the pediments and arcs that uh, we expect to of uh, Roman architecture. Basically, they are synthesizing the architecture uh, uh, tradition into distinctive form like domes of the Byzantine and arcs of the Romans. And why are they doing this is because uh, this happens in 661. And so this is very early Islamic period and Islamic architecture. They haven't had time to develop their own archi uh, architecture and artistic tradition. So they are going to borrow uh, from what they have around them. So in this uh, era, there were a lot of Roman architects and a lot of Byzantine influence. So they are synthesizing them and making them their own architecture. So here is the contribution of the civilization and cultures, which try to make a new kind of culture that we come to see it closely. So inside, um, we see an uh, extensive mosaic cycle a series of mosaic giving us a, a link to either a narrative or an abstract concept. And these are also based on the uh, Byzantine tradition and probably created by Byzantine artists. So on the lower left, you can see, this is the Byzantine model of mosaic. And on the right, we see the piece of great mosque of Damascus. Uh, you see the similarities like the uh, gold in the background uh, as uh, which is a Byzantine tradition, which gold means a spiritual scene. And here, this is uh, the image of Virgin Mary and this is uh, Jesus. So in the mosque, this is um, the, the golden pattern, which could speak of the purity of the heaven. So we see the depiction of trees here which are very similar to the Byzantine pieces. Uh, and we see the three dimensionality here uh, that they try to make it three dimensional even in this uh, figure. And um, we see in this image um, as well that how they are trying to uh, assimilate it to the Byzantine uh, um, texture and architecture. So you might think why Byzantine artists were working for Islam. Again, it's uh, pragmatism. Uh, this um, uh, the money that the Islam is giving them is just as good as the Byzantine client would give. So it's the same uh, tile work and same mosaic ideas and the same techniques. But here they are replacing the human forms with plant forms because in the Islamic tradition, using the figures of uh, people and using the figures of human and animals are not allowed. 
So they replace it with the other images like trees and flowers or some abstract, uh, more abstract uh, concepts, which is used and uh, later it is developed to other beautiful, um, very masterpieces in different Islamic architecture. So let's go to the next part, which uh, you can see this dome. This dome is called Kupa uh, Tunisr, which is the Dome of Eagle. And um, it is, was built during Walid bin uh, Abdul Malik, uh, which was the second largest dome during the Umayyad period. The first dome was the Gupa to Sahra, which was rebuilt during Seljukis. Um, first, it was a wooden dome, and after the arson in 1893, it was rebuilt with the uh, with the um, stone, and it is a kind of a 40 meters high from the ground and it is named eagle because uh if you look at it from uh, from far this is the uh, looks like from the far um if you look at the at, at the structure from the uh, far behind you can see this is looking like the head of the eagle and these flakes are like the wind wings so this uh, structure is just inside of interior architecture of the dome and uh, it's very much similar to what we see nowadays in the uh, Turkish mosques. And um, here um, over the uh, dome, there are the names of the caliphs and also the grandchilds of Prophet Muhammad and also some small uh, um, window-like uh, places that are installed here, which are all Islamic structures. Then we have another dome, which is called the Dome of Treasury, and this is placed in the courtyard, and um, it was built in 789 to 19 by the Abbasid governments. This is called Beitul Mal in um, Arabic uh, language, and it is a place which the, the, the funds of the mosque were kept and preserved in this place. So, the, uh, so this place, is a structure located in the courtyard and it stands on the eight Roman columns and uh, decorated with mosaic uh, mosaics. The mosaic uh, structure imitated the Umayyad era and the pillars uh, were uh, truncated to achieve uh, the uh, desired height. Uh, but preserved original Roman era structure. So later, the valuable manuscripts as well, it was placed in this dome. So again, I want to show you, this is the treasury dorm, which is in the Western part of the courtyard. And we have the other dome here. This is called the Dome of Ablution. This was built during the Ottoman period. And the ablution here is the water, people are trying to make ablution here and then get ready for the uh, prayers. And in the uh, uh, far behind in the e uh, Eastern side, this is the dome of clock. And by the actual light of the sun, they try to uh, depict and show the time during the day. And um, yes. So now we have the um, interior mosque. Uh, in the interior mosque, there are three arcades made of the interior space of the sanctuary, and they are parallel to the direction of the prayer toward Mecca. And if you see this panoramic view, the three uh, interior arcades uh, intersect in the middle uh, and in the center of the sanctuary facing this altar. This is the mihrab, and this is the mimbar. And I will show you what is a mimbar. Mimbar is a place uh, where the uh, imam or the uh, per person who is giving the ser sermon or the caliph is sitting here to give the sermons and people are facing to here. And after that, the caliph or the imam comes down and here just beside is the mihrab and he starts to give the prayers. So um, um, actually this is the uh, original mihrab, mihrab of the mosque is one of the first mihrabs in the Islamic world. And uh, the exact time of the original mihrab is not known because of uh, multiple repairs and reconstruction. And this uh, mihrab was found ac across the Islamic world for its beauty and uh, was noted by many writers for its beauty. And they repaired the mihrab 
under the Mamluks in times of the, uh, the Greeks, which were the emperors, and they richly decorated the mihrab in an Egyptian form. And you can see this one is the, the one renovated one during the time of Mamluks. This is the main mihrab, and these are the other mihrabs. And you can see the arcs here, all of them trying to reach the height, which is showing the unity because these are uh, trying to be a kind of uh, Islamic uh, forms and structures. Here, we can see a uh, um, uh, kind of uh, uh, verse from Quran, which is written that everyone is standing in the mihrab to say the pre prayer. So the mosque has four uh, altars or mihrabs. Each of these altars were dedicated to different branches of Sunnis, like Maliki, Shafi, Hanbali, and Hanafi. And the main mihrab is for the Malikis. Let's go to the minarets. Uh, interestingly, every uh, mosque nowadays, which you see, they have one minaret or two identical minarets. But in this case, the mosque has three minarets and all of them are different in the structure. And each of them were built in different centuries and under different empires. So there are three minarets. And what is a minaret? The minaret is the place where the <clears throat> reciter goes there. It has lots of steps to reach the top. And there are a form of the windows here. And the reciter is trying to call for the prayer in the ancient time. So because there were no technology of those in those times, the, the, the voice was echoed here and it tried to spread around the city or around the area. So the people will find that it is time for prayer. So there are three mehrabs which were made. And the first one is the bride mehrab, which is located in the northern one, and the Isa mehrab or the Jesus mehrab, which is uh, uh, located in the southwest. And also we have the right by um, mihrab which is uh, in the uh, located in the um, uh, southeast so um here uh, we can say the first uh, the first mihrab was um, the uh, bride minaret the time is not known but it is believed that the lower parts uh, were made by the Abbasid in the ninth century. And the minaret of Isa is called after the name of Jesus because in the Islamic tradition, it was believed that uh, in this minaret, Isa or Jesus will descend from the heaven in order to follow the Muslim savior, Mahdi, in the uh, last days um, of uh, the world if, as, a saving, as a savior. And this one is the Kaitabai minaret, uh, which was built in 1488. And this minaret displays the strong Islamic era and Egyptian art, uh, architecture, uh, which was influenced in the Mamluks period. So it is kind of octagonal uh, in shape. And it is believed that both the, this minaret of Kaitabai and minaret of Isa were built on the foundation of uh, ancient Roman towers. So, after speaking about the structure of the mosque, I like to also um, speak about the spiritual importance and the religious significance of the mosque. This is a shrine where the head of the John the Baptist is located. This is uh, both um, very sacred and very important and significant for both the Muslim and the Christians because the head of the John the Baptist was buried here. And according to the Christian tradition, this is a true story. And during the expansion of the mosque in Umayyad era, the workers uh, found a cave chapel which had a box containing the head of the John the Baptist and Al-Walid ordered the head be buried under the specific uh, um, pillar in the mosque and later they made it in a kind of shrine. So if you see, this is the pillars of Roman Empire, the temples, and uh, in, this is inside the mosque and this is the very old part of the mosque, which is inside the cathedral. So here you can see everything together, the temples, the church, and also the mosque, all the structures coming together, but uh, showing a very rich culture, very rich history, and very rich civilization. 
And the other important parts are for the Islam, Islamic Shias and Sunnis, because it holds uh, the great significance uh, for the Muslim. It was uh, the destination of the ladies and children of the families of Prophet. After the Battle of Karbala, the family of Prophet were captivated and they were made to walk over one month, over 30 days from uh, Iraq to Syria. And they were made to stand here in prison. And uh, it was the place where they are imprisoned for 60 days. And this picture shows the place where um, this is the older, older, uh, oldest part of the mosque. And here is the place where the captives were uh, standing, the children and women. And here on the balcony, which is the wooden part, is the place that the Khalif Yazid was standing, uh, sitting and giving his lecture here to the uh, to the um, to the captives. So this is the saddest story. Trying to actually um, make remake the story of uh, the the sufferings of the family of Prophet Muhammad in those times. So this is very sacred in this case for the um, uh, for the um, Muslims as well. And another part which you can see here is called Ras al Hussein. Why? Because the head of Imam Hussein was uh, actually um, kept here and uh, with the captives and the people which were brought after the Battle of Karbala, they put the head of Imam Hussein here in front of the children and in front of the uh, women. And as a treasure, they brought it to the Caliph in order to get the prize and the money. So this is also a secret place uh, for the, um, uh, actually uh, uh, for the uh, Muslim as well. So um, just um, I try to show the intersection of cultures here. And by just going to the uh, mosque of Damascus, you can see everything together. And this shows that how, the, uh, how each civilization were trying to borrow uh, the cultures and the, and the architecture. And they try to keep it. It's really interesting that in each civilization, each part tried to keep and preserve the oldest part from the temple, from the cathedral, from the um, yeah, from the church, and right to combine it all together uh, to keep it and to preserve it as the uh, human cultural heritage, and this is really interesting. But we don't see that this happens the, uh, in the other places because in the Mongol uh, Empire we see that the Mongolians are putting some of the monuments into fire or in the Alexander time, some of the monuments uh, were put into fire. But interestingly, in this in this uh, area, special area, the place of worship, uh, there were no such kind of um, um, actually conflict in order to put them into fire. They were all made together, brought together. And I think this uh, structure, which is one of the ancient structures for both the Christians and the Muslims, it's very unique and uh, you can't find in the other places such a story that civilization after civilization came, religions came and they just tried to contribute to make a kind of complex which is now in the form of a mosque. So um, uh, this is a very good representation of the contribution of civilization and cultures in um, showing uh, a structure which is in our hand to study the religion, to study the civilization, and to study the, uh, the cultures um, of people, societies, different civilization and different eras. Uh, thank you very much for listening. And if you have any questions, I'm ready to answer. Okay.